Hi, I'm Dami from eLearning Channel Museum. We have reached level three now. In level one video, we have learned how to read the music, the note value and note names and every basic for the music. And in level two, we have learned primary chord and major chords too. Now, in level three, we're going to expand the chords and learn more and major and also we're gonna learn minor chords too. And to know the major and minor chord, we first have to learn the accidental. So in lesson one, today, we're going to learn how to play it sharps and flats and what is accidental and other things too. From this level, I'm going to add new stuff too. Since we're learning one song in a week, it's so hard to progress fast without learning other techniques and also side reading. So I'm going to add another supplementary video. It can be side reading or techniques to improve our piano. So I hope you enjoy level three and we're gonna start lesson one today. In lesson one, we're going to learn two new things. First, sharps and flats and naturals. Without knowing sharps and flats, we cannot play a major minor chord and also half step and whole step. So are you ready to start new lessons? Okay, let's start lesson one. We're going to learn sharps, flats, and natural signs, which we call accidental here. These sharps, flats, and naturals can happen anytime during the song it just only affects for one time, only for the notes. And it's good for only for a measure. So that's why we call this is accidental. Means accidentally happen on that note, not whole entire through the song. What if you want to put the sharps and flats whole throughout the song, then we have to put it sharps and flats before the time signature like this. But if the sharps, flats, or natures are on the music during the playing, then we call that one accidental because it's a happen accidentally on only that note and only it's good for the measures. Now let's see what is sharps, flats, and natures. First, sharp. Have you ever seen this sign before? Yeah, this one can be found on the phones too. <laughs> The sharp sign. People call it pound sign, but we call it sharp sign. Whenever you see the sign, you have to play the very next key to the right on the piano. The next sign is flat. Yes, think about the flat tire. What's gonna happen if you have a flat tire? Losing the air. Yes, gets lower. So flat means kind of down. So flat is going down. So whenever you see this sign, then you have to play the next key to the left because left is going down. Now, the last one, natural. If you see this sign, means cancel the old the effect of sharps and flats. So right after the sharp, if you see this natural, means to cancel the sharps. So you will just play it, nothing written on it or natural after the flats, that cancel the flats too. So it's kind of erasing everything. Now let's move to this piano and see how it's gonna affect. Now, if you look at the number one, what is the note name? G, G here. Now, what if we put the sharps on the G? Which key you supposed to play it? That one is A. So G sharp means you have to play a black key something, but when it's a sharp, you go right side. So you play it this one. That's the sharps. That's it. And what if we play that one then? That's the flat. So from so G to the right is a sharp. From G to the left is flat because left is going down and right is going up. So whenever you see the sharp signs, you go right side, very next to the right. 
and flat means very next key to the left. That one. Now, it seems pretty easy, right? Let's see it one more time. What about a D like this? D here. Definitely sharp means you go to the right. So this one is a sharp. And flat means to the left. So that's the D flat. So if you see a D sharp, D flat, that's what it is. It seems pretty easy, right? Now, what if A to the sharp then? Yes, this one. And A to the flat is that one. Then what about, let's try it, this question. What is number one? F sharps, yes, F sharp. Okay, what about next one? D sharp, so it's going to be that one. Yes. What about the following one, number three? E flat, so go left side. Oh, but in here, there is no sharp, no black is between after E, right? E and F. Then what's gonna happen? Do we have a sharps for E? Mm, kind of, right? It's confusing. Now, if the key doesn't have any black key, then the sharp means you go right next, Y key. So E sharp is F and B sharp is C. Got it? Yes, it's very confusing, but B doesn't have any black key. So we go sharp means going up, the right next key. That's what we call very, very next key to the right. So it doesn't have to be always white, black, white, black, but it can be white, white too. The closest key that we can go from white, black, white, black, white, black, white, and it doesn't have black key, but still go white, white, and black. We call that one half step. Half step means closest key in the music. So it can be black and white and black and white but if it doesn't have anything then you will go to white too that's a half step this is a half step the closest to key they're sitting right next to each other then what about a whole step whole step is two half steps so literally one half step two half step this is whole step now basically between a white key and a white key which it has black key on it, then we call that one whole step. Whole step, because there is black key on it. And whole step, black key with it. And this one is not whole step. Why? Because it doesn't have any black keys between. So this is half step, the closest one. The same way, between black key and black key, if there is Y key on the middle, then this is whole step. Between black key and black key, if there is Y key, yes, that's a whole step. So half step is the closest key sitting right next to each other. And whole step is the note between Y key and Y key or black key and black key, there's supposed to be another key on it. So between white key and white key, it has to have black keys. Or black key to black key, between, you need white key. If there is white key, then that's whole step. Or you can remember, two half step is whole step. One, two. Now, there is very fun fact. The different notes, but the sounds are the same. Let's figure it out. What about this? If I play it that note, it can be G sharp or A flat, just like this. The note is only one, but we can write it in two different ways. It's first one, G sharps or A flat. Got it? What about this then? C sharp 
or D flat. Yes, that's the same note. But the way of writing, we can write it C sharp like this or D flat. What about this then? Known as F sharp, right? But it can be G flat too. Yes, so we can write the same note as different names like this. So using the sharps and flats, we're going to play this land is your land. First, I'm going to play it in regular tempo so that you know how fast it should be sound like. Now, let's start the song. If you're looking at the score, it starts with letter C on second beat, which is incomplete measure. In other words, we call pickup beat. So you start on the second beat, and it just straight forward to step up, and to count, and to count, and rest. The same note, C, D, E, two, one, two, rest. So it's just very simple melody line. Right hand is really easy. The problem is your left hand. Because your left hand has the chords and also sharps and flats. So it's really confusing. So try it slow from the beginning. Okay, now find hand position. Even if your left hand doesn't have anything at the beginning, you have to be ready. It says that F chord. But if you're looking at the very beginning note, starts on C, then it means F chords on inversions, right? Going back down to here. So maybe from this chord. Ready? One, C, step up. So you have to practice first phrase 
over and over again until you get comfortable with the melody lines and left hand patterns. And when you can play it well, then move it on to the next phrase. Because the next phrase, the melody line is literally the same, chord is literally the same, only adding normal note with the sharps or flats to make it sound different. So let's see how it sounds different from the first one. We're going to start the second phrase starting with the C chord, left hand. C, D, e, F, F chord, left hand. Here now, right hand is C, D, but left hand is A flat. So which note is going to be? A flat. Flat is going down to the left. So you can play it like this or you can play with finger number two it really doesn't matter so if we go from the measure 18 again flat and C chord and left hand go to the G and come back to next to G is left side that one or you can play it actually this note with finger number one so it goes one and left hand F now here again same as top note A but it has a flat how you're gonna play it A flat so it goes down to like this. Yes. And C chord, keep, but instead of F, has a sharps. So it's going to be right next key. Like this. And left hand G, but you go lower G here. This is G2, but we can't play the same G over. So we go down. G. Again, step down, F, but has a sharps, so you go up. And left hand, right hand, skip down to B, and left hand G again, and B, D, C chord, and the next chord is F. flat which is the this flat key and you come down to C yes if you're looking at the letters you will find F and one is with a flat it's F M small M means minor so F minor F major F minor this letter flat's gonna make it sound Yes, you have to know the sharps and flats can make different chords. For the right hand, you have to keep holding here. F, F minor, C. That's it. So it's pretty simple, but kind of confusing because of sharps and flats. And you have to be careful with which finger to use. So for this week, we have learned sharp, flat, and natures. Sharp means you play the very next key to the right, and flat means you play the very next key to the left. And natural means cancel the sharps and flats. We didn't learn natures yet in this music, but we're gonna learn that one later. But how do we call all these things, sharps, flats, and natural? Accidental. Yes. Also, what did we learn today? Half step and horse step. So practice this song 
for a week and try to memorize the sharps flat and be feel comfortable with the sharps and flats. And also, I will edit the technique song this week. So start working on the technique every day for at least five minutes. If you're too busy and you don't have time to practice, then play the technique instead of the song. Sometimes it's really helpful. And I will see you next week and good luck on your practice. Bye.